PAX East Day 3. We are in the Petroglyph booth. These guys have been around forever. They haven't been here forever, but 11 years you said, right? Yeah, Petroglyph been around for about 11 years. Well, let's introduce the man and the legend here from Petroglyph, Andrew. He's the, the lead designer here on Grey Goo. You can see a little bit of it in the background here. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I enjoy PAX. I'm loving PAX, but I'm loving Grey Goo right now. We just were talking. Real-time strategy games, where have they gone? Like, there just isn't enough out there right now. Intelligent gaming, look, we need something like this again. I really can't wait to show people more about this game. Talk a little bit about Grey Goo for me. Yeah, so Grey Goo is a petroglyph and six foot, I'm sorry, Grey Box is a venture back into the actual RTS genre to say, hey, we want to bring core RTS back into the into the into industry. It's really, if you look at the last two decades, the game's actually separated and said, hey, there's these three core pillars of base building, economics, and strategic combat that really kind of shattered and gone in separate different ways. And Grey Box and, and um, Petroglyph want to take this and really become, uh, a, a rebalance that so that they're all equal again. I think it's pretty important to, <laughs> to be able to do that. And I like how you guys are trying to pioneer this. They're trying to get, again, the RTS genre will just reignite it. So what's special about Grey Goo? What are you guys doing different? So what we're doing differently is we've actually gone and said, hey, we want to make a game that everybody can find their play style in, right? You look over the last 20 years, people have come up with their own types of play styles. There's people who like to turtle, there's people who like to be really aggressive, and then there's, there's, there's everybody in between. And we wanted that to be actually be there for a player to come into Grey Goo and say, hey, what's my play style? Can I find a faction that works for me and I'm going to enjoy playing? And as a result, we came out of that with saying having three factions for Grey Goo. We have the humans, the beta, and then the namesake of the game, the Grey Goo. All right, so maybe real fast, what's the difference between all three of those races? Or factions, rather. Right, so the factions themselves are all play asymmetrically, right? We have, each of them are very unique in the way they play in all aspects, whether it be their economy, their base building, or even their combat, they all very play differently. That's great because when we come out to play against it, when you go into the game, if you're playing against a human player, you're gonna play against it very differently than if you were to play a beta or a goo player. And those three different designs just really encourage us. Okay, all right. Now, so we got some hands-on time with this. I'd say that you guys have the perfect mixture of command and conquer, so the base base building doesn't really doesn't really affect people too much. It's not daunting. Like if you put your refinery, like and you can only do that in StarCraft on Vespine geysers, of course. But uh, just your other structure is not where they're supposed to be. It can screw you over. So you guys take that aspect. You also make micromanaging a lot easier. Uh, what else have you really looked to for inspiration? Um, well, to ourselves mainly. I mean, we, we've been, everybody at Petroglyph's pretty much worked on one of the RTSs in the last 20 years. There's, there's just almost like two degrees of separation between an RTS and a Petroglyph employee as far as on the design team or in, in the studio itself. And we've been able to take all that knowledge and go, okay, we know why these choices were made. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's build this from scratch and say, why did it go this way? Let's evolve this game into what it should have evolved into, where it makes sense for the player. Let's get rid of those elements that players don't find fun and really make every choice and every interaction you have with the game something that's meaningful to you, right? When you're choosing where you're going to place your refinery or where you're choosing where you're going to get your economics from, that that placement is important. When you think about what units you want or what you know your composition of your army is, we want that to be something that's simple and easy for you to do, but still comes out and in your own play style and it accommodates that. Now I know some people are wondering then, where did you guys get this name from? So, Grey Goo refers to the apocalyptic event of when nanites self-replicate and basically devour the world and leave behind almost like a grayish goo. Well, that event is really kind of tied to one of our factions, the Grey Goo, which is actually a race of nanites. Now, they're not here on the show floor today at PAX East, but they're going to be out, released out here soon. Um, and today we're showing both our like betas and human factions, which are both players in that world. When can we expect to see Grey Goo drop? Um, so we're doing a closed alpha right after PAX, then we're going to go into a closed beta and then as well as an open beta, and then we're shipping in fall of 2014. Excellent. It'll be available on Steam. Steam is very important. All right. Great goo. Andrew, very admirable. I think that this is going to be, yeah, you guys are going to be at the forefront here, bringing the RTS genre back. I'm excited for it. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope that the world gets to understand and really respect what Grego and Petroglyph are doing. Yeah.